Ashley is a well-known teen from the program because she refuses to bend to the officer's requests without proper convincing. Let's go, follow in line. First tray. Grab the tray, next one in line. The conflict between her and the officers comes to its height in the dining hall. If you're a fan of the show, you know lunchtime is always rife with drama. Can I get some mustard? Nope. Eat a little bit faster. Let's go, ladies. We don't get fast food here. We don't get cheeseburgers and french fries. Like every kid who came before her, Ashley takes exception to the menu, but the officers don't care, as usual. Do they make the food taste particularly bad for the kid's benefit, or is that just the norm? It's taking a long time, and we don't have time. Okay? She just downed her plate. What are you telling her? But I'm too good to eat this food because I'm not an inmate, right? <laughs> The officer's statement strikes a nerve, but not the obedient one as Ashley remains unyielding. That don't mean nothing in here to us. You're nobody to me. You're an inmate. And your attitude shows it all. The officer's trade throwing tantrum would have made the average kid at least pretend to comply, but Ashley has made us turn her stuff. You're not going to eat it? Why not? Because I don't eat those. Are you going to eat this or not? No, I mean. Unbelievable. Ashley pushes all the officer's buttons with that direct challenge to his authority, and you can cut through the tension between them with a knife. Clean it up. Yeah. I'm going to dump that other one on you. Get up and clean it up. You better dump it on me, Dan. Everyone in the room is edgy because they're unsure how the spat between Ashley and the officer will end. That's fine. Damn right. Is that right? Yep. Okay. I need you to clean that up. You're going to bunk with her tonight. Two of you ladies, clean this up, thanks to her. The officer loses his cool when Ashley doesn't stop being a smart ass. To be fair, she is right about the tray being his mess. Don't you agree? Shut up, piggy. Shut up what? Your mess. No, your mess, because that's your, your mess. tray. You did that, bro. There's only two places on earth you're going to end up if you don't change. Here, and the other one is death. The interview starts with the usual inmates tirade. Doesn't it ever get old? Given his lack of interest in their display, Kenneth seems to think it does. Is this what the you want to do? What's your name, boy? George is the first to take a swipe at Kenneth, and he not only doubts Kenneth's street smarts, but also his intellect. You in here for? Gang banging. Yo, little punk ass. Hey, George, you say you're Blackstone. Yeah, Blackstone. Can't even spell Blackstone. Man, he don't even know no lit, man. He ain't in no game, man. Poser out there claiming that he don't even know nothing about. Despite all the inmates focusing on him, Kenneth has the presence of mind to answer them intelligently and, more importantly, without showing emotion. It's almost like interrogating a robot. Get up, man. You ever been in trouble before, little boy? Yeah. For what? Speak up. I can't hear you. My I heard that bitch ass snitching on me. You ain't even got a loud voice, man. Can't even hear you scream. Sit your ass. Hustle Man is one of the biggest wolves in this jail, and the officers are anxious to see if his threats will yield results. You think you a tough, right? Huh? If I stick my foot so far up your ass, you'll be able to taste my damn shoelaces. Because you one of them tough. I sell that boy for Zuzus and Wham Whams. You're going to be some. That's what you're going to be. David, unfortunately, is drawn into the line of fire due to his proximity to Kenneth, but the inmates find him boring and soon return to Iceman. Give him the cone, man. Make him come. Look while you're doing it. It better not hurt me. Be glad. You sorry, folks. Grab the cone, man. That's probably the first time the inmates meet an unmovable kid and don't take his refusal to obey them well. Grab Grab the cone, dog. Better grab the cone, dog. Things could have gotten pretty edgy, but the officers controlled it. To be forewarned is to be forearmed and also for the officers to prevent avoidable lawsuits by indecisive parents. If I can have your attention, I need you parents to know this is a hands-on program. You need to exit this building at this time. The warning was timely because of what happens when Kaishan, through his behavior, shows the officer why he was brought into the program. They haven't even had the chance to check his file. Get up, remove anything in your pockets. Take your belt off, any body piercings, earrings, shoe strength. Do I need to cut your shoelaces out? Is that what you want me to do? What are you messing with your pockets for? Man, man. What? I said I put my pants on. You gotta do what? 
His guardian would definitely not be filing a case where the officer is putting their hands on Kaishan as her facial expression shows that she finds it satisfactory. Tell you to do. Oh, I talked to. Come here. I told you once. Hands here. Get up. What? What? And the only boys in the room are Kaishan and the other teens, but yes, he can't tell the difference. That's not a great way to start your tour, and he would have the nuttiest criminals on him in seconds in jail. Watch your mouth! Oh, you oh. Yes, you know. Sir, that is unacceptable. You haven't even started yet! Why the wrong with you, dog? Chill out. Nothing can keep Kaishan from exercising his freedom of speech, not even chairs that can hold down an elephant. Put me on the ground then. Why the don't you suck my boy? Remarkable, isn't it? Anthony has no respect for authority and inmates, making him the center of attention in the group. Come here, boy. Come on, boy. I like it, 14. If the inmates are allowed out, Daddy's boy would probably have an immediate attitude adjustment. Anthony is no match for the inmates and the officers, and after a heated confrontation, he loses control of his emotions. You just told him over there that your dad's gonna beat his ass. Your dad can't help yeah, you. Here. Your dad's not here. Yeah, go ahead and let them tears fall. There ain't no crying here, boy. Let, let, it, let go. it go. He's not gonna get you anywhere. You think it's a joke? While Anthony is angry, his sibling is in another place, and the officers find her almost as challenging to handle as her brother. Come sit down. Sit down. Because you can't do anything about it. See what you did to your sister? Siblings are supposed to be close, and the officers think Anthony would be the answer to their problems with his sister, but they soon discover otherwise. Hey, you did it to her. And deep down inside, you're scared to death. Look at, that's the only face that you look at. Look! The officer doesn't even know how to react or mask his shock. This is one of the few times the sibling isn't snapping at the officers to protect the other one. Right there. <laughs> Calm her down. Do you know how to do that? Yeah, help her. Calm her. <laughs> Isn't it shocking that Anthony can watch his sibling hyperventilate and remain unmoved? His answer to the officer says much about his feelings of responsibility for Alyssa. Alyssa. What's the other Sit her down. Sit her down. Sit her down. It's not my job. I mean, you're not showing any compassion whatsoever. He can't even do something that simple. That's a lot for Alyssa to process, but she'll think about it when she gets home. Hold her hand and make her feel better. Can you do that for me? Don't worry about it. Anthony. Simple question. Okay. It's on you. Stay out here. Cortazia seems to be training to be in the WWE, but in the wrong environment, which can get her in some serious trouble or land her in the hospital. My name is Cortagia. I'm 15. I get in trouble for fighting, smoking weed. I bust this girl's head open I mean, with a sock with batteries in it. Her family has firsthand experience with what Cortazia is doing and wants to nip it in the bud before she repeats history. I went to prison for um, possession of CDS. Cortasia's getting high because I seen what it did to my daughter. Most of the kids who come on the program threaten to scream back when the officers scream at them, but Cortasia is one of the few who actually do. It isn't only the officers Cortasia can stand up to, she gives as much as she gets to the inmates. What's funny? What's so funny? Take them shoes off. Take out. 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 Meeting a senior member of her dream gang might be the only thing to make an impact on Cortazia and the tour, but even that doesn't do much. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm a blood right now. You come up in here saying that boy, I will smash you out. You think that cool? Have you been put on the set and everything? On the right, they gonna lay your ass down for playing. So you need to get it together. You don't wanna be no blood, homegirl. 
Straight up, you gon' you gonna die. KK rubs Cortazia the wrong way, and she finally loses her look of mocking amusement as the exchange gets heated. Do you think that is cute? Of course. Speak up, I can't hear you. I know you don't be talking like that when you out there uh, talking to your gang, do you? So you ganging bloods, huh? What the bloods doing for you? If you don't like me, I'll in your face, do something! The confrontation gets so heated that the officers finally step in. Directly threatening an inmate with assault is a serious offense, which consequences Cortazia is most certainly not ready for. So what you try to be like, huh, something? Be like, I don't care. Red, I don't need to do yeah, you Make cool. me move out your face. All right. If I punch you, you gon' cur. Punch me, you gotta be the last. Did the 25-year-old know her age? If he did, he should be charged with going out with a minor. My name is Trey Jora. I'm 16 and I was sent to the reset program for drinking and running away. What a 25 year old. Very embattled. If there was not some correction taken, really didn't know what was going to happen to her. The pastor might not know where Tazura will end if she doesn't change, but her mom does and doesn't hesitate to draw the map for her. You don't like nobody telling you what to do and your dad is the same exact way. You say so. The only way to be sure of a cloth's cleanliness is to bring your own, and since Treasura did not do that, she'll have to manage with what the kind officers provide. It's a short top on, and her belly's hanging out. That's unacceptable. I need a small female top, please. Is this clean? With that figured out, the scare tactics won't work on her, and if the inmates want to get through to Treasura, they're going to have to think outside their bully's box. When I first saw the inmates, for a second, I was scared. You think this is a joke? Hey, yeah. funny to you. No. She want to run away from home. Stop. Yeah. Now. That's a shocking twist and doesn't happen in the program. Guess this inmate got the memo about thinking out of the box and even Treasure is shocked by the turn of events. Emotional about this Especially talking to y'all little girls, man. And you know what? The problem is y'all don't want to humble yourself and begging y'all to make change, man. The atmosphere in the interview changes after the first inmate's plea as others take their cue from that. If that doesn't affect Treasura, it's doubtful anything else will. Please, please, please. Getting kicked out of the program? That doesn't happen even with the most difficult of teens. But Treasura's indifference to the inmates yielding crossed some lines for the officers. Stick your hand down, man. You've got inmates up in your face crying and you're grinning. It's not on purpose. Trey, you can now leave the room, please. All right, whatever. Being kicked out must have shown Treasura how bad things are and the desperate need for a change. On the show, made me realize, like, wow, I'm so immature. I don't sleep around. I'm glad that she went to the reset program. Tarion thinks that he's invincible, but during his tour, he will realize why prison is one of the loneliest places on Earth. My name is Tarion. I am 13 years old and I get in trouble for fighting and still I borrow things. An apprentice mostly becomes better than the teacher and Tarion's mom is worried that he'll be breaking banks when he's Tahari's age. Tarion steals the candy, the sodas. I count my candy every single night and every morning that I wake up and count it again. He steals jewelry. He's, a, he's a jewelry thief. It's going to end up getting bigger and I don't want that to happen for you guys. Like most kids in the program, Tarion isn't planning to make the tour easy for the officers. They probably aren't expecting it too, because he wouldn't be on the excursion if he were malleable. I might go off. Tarion is determined to push all the officers' buttons and succeeds even beyond his expectations. Yeah. You got your mom, right? Yeah. You got your mom and your dad. What's your excuse? Say it. Say it. Man, yes, ma'am. Yes, what? Oh, so I'm a man? If the officers think meeting Big Bolo would make a difference, they're in for a rude shock. By the way, does Tarion believe they pair you with someone your size in prison fights? That man, that man would That's destroy you. That's how eat you alive. That you hear that? You don't with me. If that's what you want, you can you get want this. Man, he's too big. <laughs> he's too big? <laughs> when you like to fight, no ain't no size, cuz. Tarion's refusal to be scared straight despite every tactic is shocking and the officers are at a loss as to how to proceed. Oh, no, why not? <laughs> so if you was in there, you don't think he'll take him off then? Yeah. You see how easy he took him off your feet? Yes. You don't be on this bed with me. You think it's a game. But you need to. 